So, um, we've talked today a lot about uh, particularly one tool, which is Git, right? Um, and, and I've been a programmer for about eight years, I think, a professional programmer. I've been getting paid to write code for about eight years. Um, but about six, year, six years ago when I, was, uh, when I had just moved to New York and I was running a small team in a startup, a lot of people would constantly say, how have you learned so much about programming if you've only been doing this for, for so little? Um, at the time, I didn't understand why. But today, I, I've, I've kind of understood that the training that I had before becoming a programmer was more useful uh, for me to, 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 to get better at learning than anything else. So um, b before I was a, a programmer, I was a chef at a, at a restaurant in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, and I worked in hotels, and I, uh, I worked in a few restaurants in Australia. And I, I was always on my computer as well. So the, the, the idea behind closing the day with, with a talk that's not specifically about Git, but it talks about how we can um, learn to optimize our tools, our, our workflows, and, and, and become better engineers um, was, was very interesting. So um, I'd like to thank the organizers for having me to close the session. Um, to me, professional software development means tight deadlines, never-ending backlogs, continuous delivery, complex team dynamics, demanding technical skills for $11 an hour. <laughs> Not really. That's what professional cooking means. The reality is that they're both a mix of art and science, right? You, you have to sometimes use math, sometimes no. Um, sometimes you hit limits of physics with how fast your internet can be. Um, you need to learn about heat sometimes with your uh, computers. Th there, there's, there's a lot of, of science behind what we do in both the kitchen and our engineering. Um, so what can we learn from a 300-year-old profession um, as we start this new sort of e era? Uh, I think software engineering as a term has been, I think it was coined like 50 years ago, if I'm not wrong. So say it's a 50... 45-year-old profession. Um, the idea behind this talk is, can we learn to remain relevant professionals? Um, can we learn to improve ourselves, improve our product, work better with others, and add values to our organizations, uh, learning from how other people have done it before us, and not necessarily in the same area, but there's, there's some really good analogies. Um, how many times have we heard this question? Many. Right? Uh, this is something I would hear every five minutes in a kitchen. Right? Service starts, 5 p.m., customers walk in. Okay, when's my meat going to be ready? When's my chicken going to be ready? Um, in software, we don't really know. But this is not a question that I can say in the kitchen. I can't say, maybe three months. <laughs> not really. <laughs> software, we've come up with random scales story points, t-shirt sizes, we might as well be using chicken breeds. I think this would take a silky to complete. This is a silky chicken. <laughs> Means nothing, right? Um, we haven't built enough software to know how long software takes to build. And it's as individuals, as an industry, as humans, right? Um, when will the chicken be ready? I've cooked enough chicken to know how long it takes, right? But I have never <laughs> cooked a chicken with a flamethrower. <laughs> I've never, yet. So if you ask me, how long is it going to take for you to cook the chicken with a flamethrower? I'm not going to know. Uh, so when, when will it be ready? I think I'd like to invite you to write more software so that as you get better 
at writing it and more familiar with doing the same tasks, you'll become better at estimating. Because I believe that in, in like working in kitchens, I believe that estimating is something achievable eventually. And we can probably steal a little bit on how kitchens became so organized that doing it really, really, really well. Um, so we must build more software so we can reduce uncertainty. And uh, there was, there was uh, an interesting question in the talk before, which was, like, how do you, what data do you have on, like, beyond anecdotal uh, ex um, experience on the velocity? Um, there's only one talk that I've ever seen that is, that has a very scientific approach towards how software is built. And it's by um, Greg Wilson. It's called What We Really Know About Software and Why. He wrote a book which is called Making Software, and it's what really works and why we believe it. And it's the only very scientific approach about building software that I've ever seen. And we pride ourselves for being engineers, but we don't really measure how long uh, how, how much we're optimizing our velocity. How much time are we spending in support? How much time are we spending in features, in maintenance? We have to become more scientific. Even cooks know more about their trade than we do. Um, we have to document it, practice it, teach it, share it. This has been done in kitchens for a while. Um, so, first of all, we have to start with the basics the essential gear, right? On one end, we have a knife, a chef's knife, the classic, the basic tool, and our editor, right? We can't write code without an editor. We have an editor, which I consider the knife. We have an, the command line interface, or in some cases, other interfaces. We have source control. Today, we're talking about Git, right? Git, to me, is like seasoning. It's always in the background. It has to be done right. You can always tell when source control doesn't work. You can always feel it. But it's useful and it's always there. It's supposed not to be in your way. It's supposed to enhance your work. Um, dependency management and build and test tools. The, your, these are the things that we use as engineers every day and we need to get better at them. We need to sharpen our tools. Have you ever noticed the difference between a sharp knife and a dull knife? Do you know that it's better to get to cut yourself with a sharp knife than with a dull knife, because it hurts less. I've learned that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to invite you to configure and tweak your editor. One of the first things that you do in either culinary school or coming into a kitchen uh, uh, as an intern is that you spend a lot of time learning how to cut things. You learn how to turn a potato, turn a carrot. You get pounds and pounds of onions, and you have to peel them and prepare them. We don't do that as engineers, right? We don't start writing three months, just write code, go write code, just learn the, we don't do that. Learn your shortcuts. Be more effective, be more efficient, be faster. Maintain your dot files. We saw that 20 tricks talk, right? He would be a great chef. We've seen this, this fight, right? It happens in kitchens, too. The classic, the Vim versus Emacs, is the Santoku, which is the second one, to the chef's knife, which is the last one. It's always, no, oh, the Santoku is better. No, the chef's knife is better. It doesn't matter. It's my personal opinion. I use it better. I've learned how to use both. So get really good at using one. Then force yourself to learn a new one and get good at it. Aim to become a well-rounded programmer. Practice your basic skills. This was me writing JavaScript eight years ago. <laughs> probably today, too, because I'm now a manager. This was me probably four years ago. I've written four years of JavaScript. I was really good at it. Practice your skills. How long did it take this person to learn to do this? Learn different ways of doing the same. This is a mandolin. I can slice with a mandolin, I can slice with a knife, I can slice with many things. All roads lead to the same uh, destination, but I can, I can learn better. Experiment, right? Have, has anyone ever seen this before? This is uh, 
forgot his name. I wrote it down before. So this is a chef from Blue Hill, um, Dan Barber. This egg is red because he fed chickens red peppers as the only meal. So the yolk is actually red, and it's fantastic. And it's an experiment. It was wonderful. And if you go to Blue Hill, sometimes you'll get the, the red yolk egg. Um, learn from others. The original open source. A recipe, grandma's recipe. Take this, do this, this. It's forked. It's merged. It's, it's shared. It's path. Sometimes it's closed source. We don't share it, right? Sometimes it isn't. We're, we didn't invent this, right? Engineers didn't invent this sort of stuff. Open source is, comes from the kitchen. Reinvent the wheel. Sourdough bread is one of the basic things we find everywhere. But taking the grain of wheat and turning it into bread is one of the most fantastic things that we can ever learn. It's a basic thing. You can buy bread everywhere. But through learning how to do it, you learn a lot of things. You learn how to why fermentation works, why the air inside the bread is really important, why, how you taste things, why that air that's trapped in bubbles is what gives you, like why, why, why bread is fantastic and it's not crackers, it's because all the gas that is released to the back of your nose gives it a lot of flavor. Learn those things, reinvent the wheel. When you're gonna build stuff, use others, right? Don't write your own crypto, we've all learned that. But learn how to, right? Now there's, the service is when you're actually sitting people down, right? You, you have different faces, just as in engineering, um, there's different faces on, 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 on a restaurant, right? You prep, you do service, and then you go home. So before service, this is mostly aimed at the managers, but sometimes we have to do it to plan the menu. What are we doing? Where's our goal? What are we trying to achieve? What are we selling? Source your ingredients. What libraries am I using? What frameworks? Why? Right. There's a concept in the kitchens, which is the, the, the prep cook. The prep, the prep cook, which you usually start there, is someone who takes pounds and pounds of onions and potatoes and just all they do is prep. Right? This is probably a project manager. They take issues, they clean them. They, this, is, this is something that sometimes all engineers should do. Right? We all should learn how to manage our own products. Products and projects. Even if we don't do it every day, we need to know how to prep. Right? Uh, prepping is very, very important. It's, it's, it's not something that we appreciate enough. Mise en place is one of the most important concepts that I learned in the kitchen and that has helped me the most when I write software. And it, it means putting everything in place. Right? You've seen this. You get everything ready, everything chopped. There's so many engineers that I've seen that just start writing code and not really thinking where they're going to go or they don't have their, their, their workstations ready. Um, it's very, very important to learn how to do this um, during service. Communication is one of the most important tools, right? How long are you going to take? Are we going to hit our deadline or not? Why not let me know early? Um, why are you blocked? Why are you not blocked? This is extremely important. Establish supporting structures, and this is mostly aimed at managers. Right? When you are in service, when things are going, like you have people, you have hungry people who are probably the worst uh, people to be serving. Um, you need your, those who are in the, in the line of fire need supporting structures. Right? Uh, that's the support team. Who is the first line of defense. Build that as a manager. Um, clean as you go. One of the biggest differentiators between a great chef and an okay one is how their station ends at the end of the service. Do you wipe? So refactor your code as you go. If you open a file, leave it cleaner than what it was before. If you saw that, uh, uh, someone, no. It's your job to clean it too. Inspect your code. These are code reviews. 
have someone else look at your code and tell you, ooh, no. Uh, or this is A, we'll come again. Taste, taste, taste or test, 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 right? A spoon, always a spoon, test your code. Does it work? 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 Learn to serve. Do you know how to build your own product, how to serve your own product? Can you ship it? One of the biggest advantages that we have in software over kitchens is you can push updates to your product after it's been served. You can't do that in the kitchen. Once it's out, it's out. After service. Clean up. Always. The project's over. You have all this to-dos and all this tech debt. Clean it up. <laughs> Document. Not just for yourself, but for those who are going to come after you, right? Um, this is a very common thing to do after, like, you, you have five pounds of chicken and you just use them and you don't know when it was cut, you, know, you write it down. It's, it's important to tell future you why, beware, don't move this line, or tell Billy this is going to break eventually, right? <laughs> Research. This is a fantastic picture. This is an egg cooked at 30 second intervals and how it looks. Um, this is extremely important in engineering. Then teach us. The only reason why we have this fantastic foot today is because other people took the time to teach each other, right? The, the intern in the, in, in the kitchen is one of the most valued members because they are the ones who are going to carry over our, our trade, right? Hopefully it will not be for $11 an hour in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Questions about food or engineering? OK? Thank you very much. Awesome talk. Thank you. Thanks, Dave.